Hello guys, hope you are well. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today is an episode that I do every single year and a bit of fun and I know you guys enjoy it and that's to dive into my landscape photography bag. Have a look at all the equipment that I'll be using throughout the year. And uh, yeah, a fair bit's changed since last year's uh, video that I did. So thought it'd be great to yeah, get stuck into that and have a little look what I've got inside my bag this year. Lots of Fuji gear and also some film gear this year as well. Um, in case you're wondering why I've got my jacket on and my hat on inside, there's two reasons. The first, it is absolutely freezing here in the UK at the moment. And my small um, electric heater that I've got doesn't kick out a huge amount of heat. So yeah, but there is another reason as well. And that is because uh, my lockdown hair is starting to look completely ridiculous. So the hat is helping with that as well. So anyway, let's jump over to the table, get stuck into my bag and we'll go through everything I've got. So I think this is probably my best setup um, since I started doing these YouTube videos. And um, for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I think my vlogging setup is a lot better now. It's more compact, more lightweight, more versatile. So that's really cool. And I've also got my film gear in here as well, which is fantastic and I'm really enjoying that. And of course, obviously, my other Fuji gear as well. So let's get the bag over, take a look at the bag first. So this is a bag that I've been using now for the last couple of years. It's a Gregory Targi 45. It's not a camera bag, it's a backpack. Now I've done a video all about how I converted it into a camera bag and I'll link that down in the description. And I'll also link or try to link all of the gear that I've got here today in the description as well. So if you want to check any uh, stuff out, find out some more specs or costumes and stuff like that, you can do. So feel free to check that out. I'll try and leave some videos as well where I use some of this gear out in the field as well. So if you fancy checking out some landscape photography vlogs for certain um, cameras or equipment, then I'll leave some links down anyway. You get the idea. Um, so first of all, I'm going to take a little look in this pocket here. This is the waist strap of the pack. And this has got quite a large pocket on it, which is really nice because it means I can access that whenever I've got the pack on. And I keep some really uh, essential items in here. Um, I've got my batteries. So everybody that uses Fuji cameras know uh, you need quite a few batteries. So for a one day hike, I currently have four spare batteries in there, plus the two that I've got in my stills camera and my vlogging camera. Both take the same battery, which is great. So I don't need to mix and match my batteries. So that's really cool. What I do, um, because the Fuji batteries have all got an orange dot on, I have all the orange dots facing upwards. That means they're fully charged. When they're uh, flat, I turn it around so the contacts are facing upwards. And then I know, as soon as I look in there, which ones are flat and which ones are charged. So that's a really cool little idea. I've also got this small rig multi-tool and it's got various bits and bobs on it. It's got some Allen keys, it's got a Phillips screwdriver, it's got a big slotted screwdriver and these hex uh, wrenches as well. So these will do all of the little nuts and bolts on my tripods. Um, obviously this will do um, quick release tripod mounts as well. So these tools pretty much cover everything that I might need if I've got something that comes loose when I'm out traveling. And this also is very, very handy for adjusting bits and bobs on my 4x5 large format camera. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, in here, I also have a little spuds uh, lens cloth, which is quite handy because it packs away in its own little pouch and then you can take it out. If you are in really dodgy conditions, um, it's quite handy because you can clip it to something, you know, you know, maybe on, on your bag or something like this. And because it's in its own little pouch, it doesn't get wet or anything like that. So if you need to use it quite regularly and you don't want to keep getting it out, it clips onto something and packs away to stop it getting wet and dirty. So that, these are really cool, actually. I've got quite a few of these. I use these quite a bit for all of my photography. So yeah, that's the tiny little pouch there. Just stuff that's easily accessible. Sometimes I'll put a snack bar in there as well, or maybe some, you know, like a boiled sweet or something like that. A couple of those in there maybe some tissues. So still got a bit more room to get some more stuff in. My top pocket uh, has all of my accessories that I need for various bits and bobs. So 
this is the Case Wolverine Magnetic Circular Filter Set. Love this filter set, it's uh, absolutely brilliant. Obviously no graduated filters, but these are all magnetic and circular. So you put the threaded uh, magnetic adapter ring onto the front of your lens, and then these just clip on, uh, simple as that. Uh, obviously the polarizer you can rotate to polarize your shot. This has got a three stop, a six stop and a 10 stop filter. Uh, so that's the 10 stop there. And you'll fit in this nice little case. I've done a review just on these filters. Like I said before, I'll leave that link down in the description if you fancy checking that out. They come with a nice little lens cap as well, which you can get for all of the adapter rings. So you can put the adapter rings on all of the lenses, put one of these magnetic caps on all of the lenses, and then you've just literally changed your filters over. It's so quick and simple. And I've been really, really impressed with these. So next we have my shutter release cable. So this is great if you're using a Fuji X-T3 or something like that, and you've got the threaded shutter button. This will screw into that, which is quite nice. But mainly I use this for my large format camera, my four x five, so I can fire the shutter without having to touch the front of the camera. So yeah, pretty straightforward. Just press it and it releases the, uh, pushes the button in there. So yeah, straightforward shutter release cable. Next, in this little bag, we have my loop. And this is, oh, I think it's an eight times loop. So when I'm shooting my, with my large format camera, sometimes it's very, very difficult to see your focus, especially in dull conditions, such as a misty woodland. Uh, and this is quite good uh, just to put on the back of the ground glass and see uh, how well you'll focus just helps you yeah check your sharp focus really so that's the only real real use for that um, but that goes in that top there as well this is another device that I use for my large format photography this is really really handy handy actually I found this from RS components and essentially it's a level and it's highly accurate I think these are about 25 pounds so they're not cheap but the levels on them are very very accurate and it's got some uh, obviously measurements here as well and also the edges of it are square as well so this is great for setting up a large format camera when maybe you want to try to get everything level this is incredibly accurate probably you know within i don't know it's very accurate <laughs> right next the front panel so in the front panel i carry my waterproofs now, even if it's a fantastically warm, sunny day, I always take my waterproofs with me because, especially in the UK, the weather can just change like that. Um, so being comfortable when you're out and having a little bit of peace of mind when you're out, just to make sure that you know you're gonna be, you know, you don't wanna get soaking, especially if you're on a long hike. These are very, very lightweight waterproofs. This jacket is um, a mountain equipment jacket. I forget the, uh, the actual model. I'll, I'll try to link it, like I said, in the description. But this is breathable, which is really nice, and uh, fully waterproof. And it all cinches up around your face, and yeah, it's got some breathable armpit vents as well. So yeah, I, I really like this. I've been very, very impressed with it, and it seems to be very waterproof as well. And these trousers are, again, breathable, waterproof trousers, and these are from Rab. Um, I like Rab equipment. Uh, they're local to me pretty much uh, Sheffield is about an hour away so it's quite nice to be able to support a local company so that's really nice and um, yeah these are just breathable waterproof trousers again lightweight they have a zippable bottom so you can get them over your boots dead quick and they also cinch down at the bottom there as well so yeah pretty pretty straightforward good quality gear from Rab always recommend Rab equipment so let's open the back panel now the good thing about this pack is it's uh, got a rear entry panel on it as well, which is fantastic. It means you can lay it down on its front, open the pack up, and get your gear. Uh, if you had to lay it down the other way, obviously when you pick it up, all the strap, you know, especially if it's raining, all the straps are wet and everything as well. So first thing we're going to see is my dark cloth. And I've made this, and actually I haven't finished making it yet. It's a bit of a prototype. But I, I can put this around my camera. This is light proof cloth. 
put this around my camera, I can get inside there and look at the ground glass in the back of the camera uh, in complete darkness, which really helps me to see the back of the camera, especially uh, you know during sort of twilight hours or very early misty conditions in the woodland where you know the light is <laughs> not readily available. So that really really helps. So you know in conjunction with the loop as well, these two things are essential really for the type of photography that I've been doing with my large format cameras. So the main thing in the back here is obviously my large format camera, which is my pride and joy, to be honest, I have to be honest. Um, I made this, I built the whole thing from scratch. If you're interested, I'll leave a link for that video down in the description where I go through how I built the whole camera. This takes four by five film. So uh, it's, uh, I've been really enjoying this, like just so much recently. It's been great. It's been a bit of a lockdown project. I've just really been enjoying over the course of the last few months and I'm gonna to continue to enjoy it. I do need to get some more lenses. Currently, I only have a 150 millimeter lens, which is equivalent to about 50 millimeters if you shoot in 35 mil full frame. So, but actually this has uh, been pretty good for me shooting woodland. So um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the results from me getting in the woodland, but obviously if I want to go out and shoot some vistas, that type of thing, I'm going to need to get a wider lens. And I could also do something a little bit tighter in the woodland as well. So I do really want to, you know, increase my large format lens lineup, but that, uh, that will come, that will come over time. So let's talk about my vlogging setup before we get on to my digital still setup. Um, firstly, I'll talk about the lens I'm using for vlogging and it is this. It's the Fujifilm XC 15 to 45 F 3.5 to 5.6. Now this is one of those uh, you know, electronic zoom lenses it's all made of plastic, it's all very cheap. But I don't love it as a lens, I've got to be honest, I don't love it as a lens, but one thing it does have going for it is it's super compact and it's really, really light, which actually is very, very beneficial for the amount of gear that I've got in my pack now. I want to try to save every, uh, every ounce I can where I can. So this is great as well, you know, if you're carrying the camera around, it's a super, super lightweight lens. And obviously with it being 14 mil, um, it's quite wide. So, you know, if you're holding the camera and you're doing a shot uh, towards yourself, it's wide enough to get everything in. And also at the other end, 45 mil, it's quite tight to be able to get some of those close in detail shots of, you know, leaves moving, grasses, all that type of thing. So yeah, I don't love it as a lens, but actually it's very, very functional and it's really doing the job. And um, yeah, I'm gonna to continue to use it on the vlogging camera. So let's get on to the vlogging camera. So this is my vlogging camera. This is the Fuji X-S10, uh, which I've had for uh, two, three months now, something like that, perhaps a bit longer. And while I don't love it, as a stills camera, I do love it for video work. Um, so, you know, it's just my opinion though. It's got a lovely grip, really, really nice grip. So the ergo on it is absolutely fantastic. It's got the flip out screen, which if I do it the right way around, is fantastic for vlogging. You can see yourself, so you can check out your composition. So that works really well. Um, it's lighter than a lot of the Fuji cameras like the X-T3, X-T4, X-H1. So that's great as well. And overall, the image stabilization in it is really, really nice. Um, it's got a few different modes for the stabilization. You can have uh, digital and optical stabilization. And if you've got an optical stabilized lens, such as this as well, you've got you know, three different types of stabilization. So you can, you know, you can get really nice steady shots when you're walking. And that's pretty cool and that's been very, very helpful. So overall, I really, really like this for vlogging and doing my YouTube videos. But I covered all of that actually in a, another video, which again, I'll link down in the description so you can go and check that out. But yeah, I, yeah, I do love it as a video camera. I've actually shot a wedding on this as well. Um, got it all rigged up with my uh, Atmos Ninja and uh, battery pack on the back and got it all rigged up and uh, shot a whole wedding on this uh, just before Christmas. 
and it coped really well and the, the, the footage was exceptional especially coming out of the Ninja V with the ProRes so yeah pretty uh, pretty impressed actually for video use the specs are really high and uh, pr pretty much on par with the likes of the X-T3 so yeah that's what I'm using for vlogging with I'm also using the Rode Video Micro, which is just out of shot here, which is taking the audio from me now. I'll show you uh, where that sits in my bag. You can see the wind muff or the dead cat um, that goes on the, on the mic there, just helps to break down the wind noise in the mic. So that's handy. And that will sit on the hot shoe of the uh, XS10 and get all of my audio sounds and uh, yeah, tend not to use a lav mic unless the conditions are extremely windy. Now we're gonna move on to the stills side of things, which sits in a separate padded pouch in the top of the bag. So I'm gonna get that out now. <sighs> there we go. So this little pack here contains all of my stills equipment, uh, which is pretty crazy really when you think about it. But let's get into it, let's have a little look first. So going on to the, uh, the lenses first before we get onto the camera. So this is my uh, telephoto lens. It is the 50 to 140 f 2.8 lens. Wonderful, wonderful lens. Has image stabilization on it. And obviously it's got the uh, tripod mount as well, which is really handy. Get a nice, get a nice balanced uh, tripod, which is really helpful. That also uh, swings around as well, so you can quickly flip from uh, landscape orientation to uh, vertical orientation, which is really, really nice. Image quality out of this lens is absolutely amazing. It's uh, one of my favorite lenses, to be honest. Now, there's a, a good argument that I would like to uh, swap this out for the 55 to 200 f4 lens because it's a lot smaller and has a essentially bigger reach and to be honest it's something I'd like to do and I know when I did my last what's in my bag uh, video a lot of people commented why are you not why don't you have that lens the reason I have this lens is because I use it for my uh, professional photography taking portraits and it's a great lens for wedding photography really versatile and that's why I own it and it's very very difficult for me to justify having both of the lenses but if I was going to change one lens, it would probably be this one, just because the 55 to 200 is smaller and I don't need the f2.8 aperture for landscape photography. So maybe at some point in the future, I might swap this out, but even so, it's an amazing lens and uh, yeah, quality wise. Now, I wouldn't hesitate to recommend it. It's just a bit weighty and a bit large for my pack, but it does all fit in there. So, you know, it's not all bad. Um, next up, we have the 18 to 55. Uh, this is marked down by some as a kit lens, but it isn't really. I think they, uh, I think they mark it. This is the kit lens of 15 to 45. So this isn't really a kit lens, I don't think. I mean, it's the build quality of it's amazing. It really is. Obviously, what a 2.8 uh, minimum aperture on it, and uh, it goes up to f4 when we zoom in. So, at 18 mil, it's 2.8, 55mm, it's f4. So, for a kit lens, you know, that's quite remarkable, really. So, I don't really think it's a kit lens, it's also stabilized. Image quality is amazing, to be honest, for a lens of this price point. Now, I'm not going to say it's amazing throughout the focal range because it's not once you start getting above. 45 mil it does soften up somewhat the closer you get to 50 mil it does get quite soft um, I do plan on doing a video at some point where I really test this lens out but I think if you know its limitations um, you're absolutely fine so if this goes down to 50 mil there's not really any need for me to go above 50 on this lens so you know I, I don't think that's a big problem and it goes down to 18 mil. And again, once you get down to 18 mil, things soften up a little bit as well. But that's not a massive problem for me because I've got the 10 to 24 mil. So this goes all the way up to 24. So really, I only really need to use this lens between say 20 mil and 45 mil. So it's only covering a very small focal range. 
And at that, uh, during those focal range, it's very, very good, very sharp. I don't have any problem using it at all. Also for video, it's fantastic. So if I didn't want to take this with me, then that would be the lens that is on the XS10 doing the video work. But I quite like having the separate vlogging setup, which allows me then to put any of these three lenses on my stills camera without having to swap out with my video camera, which is what I was doing last year. So yes, the 10 to 24, again, stabilized lens. So all three are stabilized, which is great if I wanna shoot some handheld shots. 10 to 24, not much to say about it. It's a really good lens, f4 minimum aperture. Uh, yeah, always been really happy with it. I don't tend to go too wide. I've never been a massive fan of super, super wide shots. Um, so I don't tend to go down to 10 mil that often, but it's there if I need to. So yeah, really, really happy with this lens, but all of them, to be honest. So that's the lenses, just three, but that covers from 10 mil all the way up to 150 mil. So really wide focal range. Next up, the camera. Now I have to say, I keep swapping between this, which is the X-H1, the Fuji X-H1, and the Fuji X-T3, which I'm using to film with right now. I keep uh, swapping between the, the two, to be honest, and you might have noticed that from my videos. Sometimes I feel like shooting with the X-T3, sometimes I feel like shooting with the X-H1. Um, they've both got their pluses and minuses, to be honest. This is more cumbersome. It takes up more room in the pack. It's got a bigger grip, it's a bit heavier, but uh, I like the Ergo. I really, really do enjoy the ergonomics of it. Uh, so that's a plus. This has also got IBIS, which is also very nice as well, especially for handheld shots. So yeah, keep swapping between the two. I think as a, a camera to hold, the X-H1 is probably my favorite camera that I've got in terms of ergonomics. It feels amazing in my hand. The X-T3 is a little bit more difficult to grip. But that being said, the X-T3 has a little bit more resolution and it's smaller. So that comes into play then if I really need to keep the weight and the space down in my pack, I can swap this out for the X-T3, so. So you might be wondering why I have three cameras. <laughs> well, when I'm doing my professional work, i.e. weddings and portraits, it's always good to have a backup. So I always wanna have two bodies that I'm shooting with and then uh, another one for a backup. Sometimes I have a second shooter working with me as well. And if I do, I supply them with a camera. So it just makes things easy for me where my cameras match. And uh, yeah, it's all kind of look the same. So that's, uh, that's why. There are a few other additional items I take with me, but I'm gonna be leaving these in the car, I think pretty much most of the time from now on. Uh, I'll show you what I mean. Not all the time, but this is the um, DJI Mavic Air. It's a, obviously a drone, which is, uh, I, might, I might have mentioned before, I've got a love-hate relationship with this drone. Like, it's amazing, like, you can get some awesome footage, um, but it's quite unreliable. It doesn't always connect. Sometimes it loses its, uh, you know, Wi-Fi signal, which is a right pain in the backside. So I'd never recommend you buy a DJI Mavic Air. I'm not sure what the Mavic Air 2 is like. Maybe that's better, but the first one, or at least my copy, is unreliable, to be honest. What I'm gonna be doing probably from now on is probably park up somewhere. Say if I'm going on a hike, I'll probably park up somewhere, maybe do a flight with the drone, fly it out for 500 meters or so, get a bit of aerial footage, pack it away, leave it in my car, and that will be it. Um, and it will save me carrying the extra weight because I can't get this in my pack with all this. <laughs> it's just not doable for weight and obviously size. So that's probably what I'm gonna be doing with the drone from now on. And also another thing as well, like when you're out and about or when I'm out and about um, hiking, there's always the odd person uh, you know, around as well. And to be honest, having a drone buzzing around people or flying across people, it's a bit of an invasion in their privacy. People generally when they're out in the countryside want to go, you know, get away from all the noises and the hassle and just, you know, enjoy the countryside. And I think a drone flying around isn't, you know, it doesn't really res respect other people's um, 
you know enjoyment of the countryside sometimes so I always make sure there's nobody around when I'm flying it but that's not always possible so you know there is that to, uh, to think about as well also I've got this uh, Giotto's rocket blower um, that is left in the car in case I need to clean some stuff out some dust out of the sensor or blow some crap out my lens it's always good to have the rocket blower so yeah what I didn't take out the back was the <laughs> 4x5 uh, film holders so obviously to load the film in the, uh, the large format camera there we're going to need some film holders so currently I'm carrying two of these which covers me for four sheets of film I'm thinking about getting another one because it'd be nice to take six sheets out um, but shooting large format things are a lot slower and uh, yeah could take up some serious time just exposing four sheets but yeah i'd quite like to uh, quite like to get another film holder so that'd be something i'm going to get these take two sheets obviously one either side so yeah so that is everything that i take with me on a landscape photography shoot or a hike um, it's great actually to be able to take out the film gear and the digital gear have that flexibility and enjoyment of shooting both formats really really like uh, you know i'm looking forward to getting out and doing more with that as soon as possible so yeah, that's, uh, that's it. I think this is my best setup I've, uh, I've had to date, to be honest. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna really enjoy using this setup over the next year. So I hope you enjoyed it today. If, you, uh, if you'd like to uh, support the channel, please consider joining my photography club. There's lots of stuff going on over there from uh, monthly galleries, monthly challenge, message boards, monthly videos, my online classes, yeah. Heaps going on. Please do go and check it out if you fancy, like I said, supporting the channel. Also, a massive thanks to everybody that uh, continues to watch my videos and uh, you know, likes, shares, and supports me that way too. So that's it for today, guys. Really appreciate your time, and I'll see you next week. <laughs>